YouTube. I hope everyone is doing really well today. I'm off and so I kind of didn't do my eyes all day. I ran a few errands, but I had intentions of doing this tutorial for you because I did get a great response to my video I posted yesterday, the Ann Taylor, uh, the loft, you know, shirt haul and such. And a lot of people wanted to know how I did my eyes. So I'm going to try to recreate that for you. It was sort of one of those days where I had, um, I had extra time on my hands. I was going to get coffee with my mom and dad and my dad was out for a run. And so it was like, there was a lot of time in between, um, when I was like kind of getting ready to do my makeup and when we were actually going to leave. So I just sat down and I spent a lot of time trying to do my makeup and playing around. So I'm going to try to recreate it. It wasn't like a, a formula that I really know to think of right now off by hand, but I'm going to try to recreate that look for you. I was just playing around. So I know that the one main component of the look was this Makeup Forever um, cream, aqua cream in number 14. I had just got it the day before. So I actually was, um, I was testing it out. I didn't know if I liked it. I still don't know if I love it. I, I have number 13, which I really love. This color is amazing, but I don't know if I love how it applies and the texture. Um, I wore it the night that I got it, and then I wore it yesterday, and my, and my shadow stayed on really nice throughout the day and it did create a really nice base layer color I just don't know if I could create that same thing with another base and, and really layering shadows this tended to I'm sorry I know this isn't a review but I just am kind of letting you know because I want to warn you before you guys run out and buy this or you know if that's what you plan on doing this is the color which it's an amazing color um, but I want to warn you that it's a different it's a little bit different of a texture so it kind of I feel like it made my eye, eyelids a teeny bit dry or creepy looking, which I didn't love. But I layered shadow over and then I layered this again. You'll see. We'll try to work it out with this tutorial. Um, but I did want to warn you that I'm, I'm not a humongous fan of this texture before I get started. So if you're planning on getting this, the color is phenomenal. I usually do like this formula in some of the other colors, but it's a little bit tricky to work with. So just you know, bear that in mind. Um, also, I need to tell you that my nails are horrendous right now. I didn't get in last week, which I normally would have at my two week nail appointment for shellac. Um, I didn't get in last Monday. It was a crazy, crazy weekend last weekend. Crazy week, and then I couldn't get in today. So, my appointment's tomorrow. Since then, since like all this time's gone by, I started peeling the shellac off my nails, which is horrible. It soaks off. You should never peel it off, but I did, and so I just I need to tell you that beforehand. Some of it's still on, some of it's peeled off. My nails look a mess, and um, I don't know why I did it. Just like nervous habit, I guess. But that's mainly why I get shellac, so I don't fuss with my nails. And the way my nails and the way I feel today about my hands is just a reminder that it's totally worth the money for me to get my nails done as often as I do, because it's just a huge pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Cheap nail polish is a huge pet peeve of mine. Okay, so. We're going to get started and I'm going to lay down a base first and what I um, did yesterday, I think in the day before, was lay in low paint pot. It's kind of what I, I go to, my go-to neutral paint pot. Um, trying to think, you could do a painterly, you could do a soft ochre, it doesn't really matter. I think that even though the aqua cream is a cream base, I still like to have a paint pot base down just because, you know, I love paint pots in it makes this a little less apt to crease, although I didn't notice any creasing, which is a good thing. So like I said, after I laid that base down, um, the next thing I used was this, this Makeup Forever Aqua Cream in 14. And so here's the color. And this is a color that's just awesome, awesome, awesome with blue eyes. See, even when I swatch it on my skin, it's pretty awesome. but. Uh, the texture is just, it dries really quickly, so it's hard to maneuver around. I like to use my finger, um, but I did use this brush yesterday, and this is just a cheapy e.l.f. brush. I'll show you the brushes real fast that I'll be using. I'm using this e.l.f. brush, Cheapo from Target. Um, two MAC brushes and 217, which are dirty, but whatever. I always tell you guys, don't worry about spending a fortune on brushes. Because I think that you can get good results with budget brushes. But 217s for MAC are awesome. You can never have enough of those. 
So what I'm going to do, um, what I did yesterday is I'm just going to dab this brush in. I like the stiffness of this brush. Um, ideally, you'd want a synthetic brush to use with cream products. And I'm just going to lightly spread this on my eyelid. I didn't go any higher than the crease. I kind of went right below the crease um, and placed this product. And you don't want to do a real, um, a real heavy layer at first. You kind of want to build it up. Just because, like I said, this is a little harder to work, work with, this product. And as people say, you know, when you're using cream products or paint pots or whatever, don't worry about too, being too, uh, too neat with them because you're going to blend. But as you can see, I just kind of paint, painted that. I just kind of placed that right up to my crease. And then I'm just using my brush to kind of work it around before it completely dries to get more of a thin layer of it. I don't want to get a whole thick layer. So this look can be, I use it as a daytime look yesterday. It can be a nighttime look for people who don't really. Like to wear a whole lot of dark colors during the day. But it's more a look that I did the darkest color on my lid. And then I kind of graduated it up to a lighter color, whereas, you know, some typical looks you do kind of light all over the lid, darken the crease, that sort of thing. This look really takes a lot of color and it brings it almost up to the brow bone, so. I just feel like even though these are aqua creams, they're not real creamy and they're not real blendable. Make sure you really work it into um, the corner of your eye. Don't forget about that. Sometimes it's hard to get in there with a brush, but it helps to look down and like in the opposite direction. Okay, so my eyelids are pretty much covered. You can see they're not real neat. I'm just going to take the edge of this brush. Again, this is what the brush looks like. And I'm going to go to the edge of my eyelid and just kind of go back and forth with the brush to soften the edge of the cream. Like I said, once more before it completely dries, it's pretty dry right now. But I don't want to bring that color up too far past the crease, so. It's such an awesome color. I just, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to return this just because the, the color is so amazing. especially good for blue eyes. You guys all noticed that my eyes popped, you know, a little more than usual yesterday, and that's because this type of color on blue really brings them out. So if you have blue eyes, it's kind of a, you know, an asset to wear. Burgundy-ish, brownish. Now there is a shimmer to this. I want to see if you guys can see. You can't see the texture that this gives the eyelid, but it does give it a little bit of a textured look. And so that's um, something that you just will work around and manipulate with shadow. So the only other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to dip the edge of the brush in. And to help my shadow under my eyes stay on longer, I'm just going to do a bit of this cream under my eyelid or under my um, lash line on the bottom. Okay, so that's done. The base work's done. I think that's actually the trickiest part, working with that um, aqua cream. Next, I'm going to go in with a few of my matte colors. And um, the, first, the first one I'm actually going to go in with is... Here's my palette. Why did I stick my fingers right in the eyeshadow? I need, like, something to wipe off with. I don't have anything. Anyways, here's my MAC palette. I'm going to go in with this one. So this is Blackberry. I'm going to take my 217 and I'm going to just get my brush in Blackberry and tap off the excess and I'm going to work Blackberry 
just kind of along the, um, in my crease and along the edge of where the cream ended to soften that line. Fluffberry is sort of a nice color. It's a little bit lighter than the aqua cream. At this point, I kind of, I start to work on um, kind of the cat eye look with the shadow, and I bring the blackberry up a little bit, or I did yesterday. This is just kind of what I did yesterday. I worked it the whole way in, so... And that's kind of how it looks after you do the blackberry. So I'm going to do the blackberry on this other eye. Okay, this is what it looks like. Um, what next? I'm going to go back in with this brush. And I'm going to use... I'm trying to see here. I'm going to use some of Embark. And I'm going to use a bit of Shadowy Lady. And I'm just going to, you know, tap some Embark, some Shadowy Lady. I go back and forth between the two. Tap off the excess, and then I just am placing that on top of the cream shadow. Another uh, thing about this cream shadow is I feel like it sort of patches in places on my eyelid. So that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of, but... I'm intensifying the color of it with the Embark and the Shadowy Lady. Kind of mixed together. And I'm not bringing that up past the crease. I'm just putting that over where the cream shadow was. Right up to the crease. Make sure you get it inside. There we go. And then I'm going to go back in one more time with Blackberry and blend. And that's the look that I have right now. And now what I really like to do when I'm doing colors like this, I do this a lot with um, this type of look where you have like a darker on the eyelid and then you kind of, you graduate up into lighter. I like to use a brown or a, not really a taupe, but just more of a brown tan color. This is probably what I'm going to use is soft brown and kid. So I'll probably use a combo of these two. It's, Depending on your skin tone, you know, use something like that. And then I want to put that in between my brow bone and in between the blackberry. So I'm going to use a another uh, 217. And I'm just going to actually, on my skin tone, I'm going to use soft brown. So I'm just kind of dipping in the soft brown. And then I'm going to work that color um, along the edge of where the blackberry ends. And I'm going to pull that in, too, so. I'm not going to be too picky about, like, getting it right on the edge of the blackberry. I like uh, sort of a gradient look, so I'm going to actually mix it with some of the blackberry as well. In this dimension, like with the soft brown, the mixture of the blackberry in the kind of um, brownish color, like soft brown or saddle even, more of an orangey brown, it's going to make your blue eyes pop even more if you have blue. Because those colors, like soft brown and saddle, make blue eyes really pop. You could use texture. Um, you could use wedge. But I like to use more of an orangey brown. And that's kind of the look that you get. So you can see the difference between this eye without it and this eye. This is a little more blended and has a little more pop to it. So using that brown really connects everything and pulls it all together. Okay, I'm back. So um, 
Using the soft brown, just finishing up this eye with it. If you don't have any of these MAC shadows, like the soft brown or kid or saddle or texture or wedge, you can always use a bronzer. So that's another trick that I do sometimes for a blending color or a gradient color between my eyelid and my crease color and my eyebrow. Sometimes I just end up using a little darker contour or a bronzer color. So that's always an option, you know, if you don't have some of these colors, you know, work with what you have. You can always use even like a darker, um, even a darker setting powder or something. You can be really resourceful with your makeup collection if you just kind of experiment. So that's, that's that with using the, um, the soft brown. And then I'm just going to kind of wipe my brush off on my hands and I'm gonna use a lighter color to hit my brow bone and I'm probably going to use um, Orb, which is just a matte, um, matte cream color. I'm going to go right under my brow bone with that. And with this look, I don't mind that I'm pulling some of the soft brown up to the brow bone. I, in general, I'm going to fix my eyebrow real fast while I'm talking to you. In general, I don't... Um, I don't like on me personally a real stark brow bone color. I've never been one to put a lot of shimmer up there or a, a real white color. It's just not really my style. Um, other people, I'm not saying it doesn't look good. It, it does. It's a different kind of look. But I always do. I'm just fixing my eyebrow because it kind of rubbed off. Um, I always do more of a matte color. But anyways, I do a matte look, you know, under my brow bone. And I don't mind with this type of like darker eye look, I don't mind pulling the color up a little bit into the brow bone. Um, it's, it's a different look for sure, but it, it does create sort of a nice gradient. So when I do this orb, I'm not real worried about my brush being extremely clean. And I'm not real worried about, you know, having some of the soft brown pull up. I just kind of blend it all together. I'm just gonna go in once more with the um, with Shadowy Lady, which is a dark color, and I'm just gonna work that Shadowy Lady right on the outside of my eyelid, just to create a little bit more, you know, drama. Kind of pull it in over the lid. And then once more, go, I'm just going to layer. This look is really a lot of layers. Go in with the cranberry once more. Do a final blend with the cranberry. Why did I say cranberry? I meant blackberry. I'm getting my berries mixed up. And then I'm going to do one more dip in to the soft brown. So I'm really just doing everything I did, and I'm doing one more final layer of it. So this is the soft brown that I'm placing one more layer of. And that's it. So now I'm just going to add a few more things, final touches. Um, I'm going to take a fluffy brush and I'm going to dip in to... I'm going to dip into Embark and Blackberry. I'm going to dab into both of those, tap it off, and I'm going to just kind of messily place this underneath my eyes. I think this is just one more step that sort of makes the eyes pop. But you can skip that step if you just want to keep the color on top of your eyelids. So that's basically kind of what I did underneath. I think I ended up taking yesterday even a little bit of the soft brown again and just putting that, kind of layering that under. In a, Actually on top of and under the sorry if I like have my mouth open when I'm doing this it's sort of a bad habit so that's the soft brown and then the last thing I did which really is the um, final thing to I'm seeing if I can find it I know I brought it down this is what really makes the uh, the blue in the eyes pop but it is, here it is, this color is amazing. It's from NYX NYX and it's Fahrenheit 
Lara Lollipop 26. She had um, mentioned this on her blog a long time ago. I think a video and a blog. And it's a red, it's like a, a metallic -y red color. Not really red, like a reddish. I can't explain it. You'll just have to check it out if you're around any NYX Cosmetics or Ulta. But it's awesome. For blue eyes, I can't recommend it enough. So the last thing I did, which is kind of like the final trick to my look, um, was dipping in this Fahrenheit. Getting it on my brush. You can see how vibrant it is on the brush. Tapping it off and then working that into the inner corner. So this red, do you see how that really just even makes the look pop even more on the side that I added it to? And you don't want to go in too far, you just want to blend it enough that it's on the inner third of your eye. And then I also took some and did it on the inner third of the bottom of my eye. One more step that you could skip um, is using engraved or a color on your waterline. But I did use this yesterday. This is by MAC. It's just called engraved. It stays a lot better than like smolder or feline. But it's not as black, so... Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand so I can hold my compact. And adding that to the waterline creates a little more drama. So that's something you could skip also. Um, okay, the next thing, I'm going to take my Ultra Liner by Maybelline and I'm going to do my cat eye. You could just use smudged liner. I like to do the cat eye. It's just my personal preference. But you could do like a really smoky black or a plum or even a dark, dark brown smudge liner. When I do my cat eye, I don't go in the whole way. I only do like the outer two thirds of my eye. And before I hit um, the edge of my eyelid, I swoop it up. So I don't, that's like one trick that I do. I don't go to the very, I don't draw down to the corner and then go up. I start to bring it up before I hit the corner. So I never actually um, bring eyeliner down to the corner, the outer corner of my eyelid. So that's one little trick of mine to make your eyes look a little more catty. And lifted, I guess. The lighting's starting to get a little bit worse. Oh my gosh, I look so dark right now. Um, is this going to help at all? I don't know if that helps. It's not really that the sun's going down. It's just like really cloudy outside. It's not even late. It's 4 o'clock. Um, but there's my cat eye. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So you can do it from this angle. And there's my liner. And last but not least, I'm going to put on my mascara, which is, of course, my favorite, L'Oreal Telescopic. Nice budget one. 
but great for a ton of length. If you have fairly thick lashes, this mascara I always say is really great. Um, if you need a whole lot of volume, you might not like it as much. put lots and lots of mascara on. I think that false lashes would look really good with this look, but I just, sometimes the glue irritates my eyes. Okay, and that's the look. So that is the eye look that I did yesterday, and I know it's not by any means um, probably <laughs> extremely easy to follow, but I did want to show you guys what I did just because you asked. And if you have these products, it's not that hard of a look to do, um, but it is sort of, like I said, I was playing around, so I don't have it like down to a science. I just was sort of going with the flow here to show you guys uh, the final completed look. So um, that's my eyes. If you have any question, just, questions, just let me know. Put them in the, in the comment section or uh, Facebook me or tweet me. Um, my Facebook is facebook.com slash the bombshell suite. That is my fan page, and that's where you can, you know, fan page, whatever. But that's where you can see updates from me, like on the go. Just uh, basically, I post pictures sometimes when I'm out. That's where I kind of do announcements. And then my other Facebook is uh, Vanessa the Bombshell, and that's where you guys can Facebook comment and ask me questions or ask each other questions and kind of create your own sort of threads with that one. So, Two different Facebook pages, and then my Twitter is Bombshell Suite. So plenty of plenty of ways to contact me. Um, that'll all be in the down bar. And like I said, if you have any questions about this look, I'll try to mention all the products below. I know this is a long tutorial, but you know how I am. I talk a lot, and I'm not like expert tutorialer. So hopefully, I'm able to edit this down a little bit shorter. And I hope you guys sort of got the main idea of this look. So um, I hope you have a really great day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.